Merrill Memo with Matthew Dickerson from Dubbo Regional Council. Number 3.5, Triple M, it is uh, Matthew here. I'm drawn by the Mayor of Dubbo, Matthew Dickerson. Matthew, how are you today? Good, thanks, Matthew. Good to be chatting to you as always. Yeah, no, it's excellent. Um, now, just uh, I wanted to get a bit of an update. The storm now uh, that we had a, 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 almost a week ago um, is still causing a bit of a headache uh, for council and for people around town. Well, I actually remember I went for a bike ride on Saturday morning just to have a bit of a look around and see what sort of damage was around various locations. And I could hear that constant noise of wood chippers and chainsaws. And I thought to myself, that's going to be the sound of Dubbo for at least the next week. And it has been the sound of Dubbo for that sort of time frame. The SES have done a fantastic job. Our emergency services in general, we have some unbelievable people, many of them volunteers doing some fantastic work in the community. So they had, I think, something like 250 phone calls on that Thursday night. So they do do a fantastic job. So thanks to them. What we have offered from a council perspective is free drop-off of green waste to our Wallandra Waste Depot. So if you've got branches that came down, trees that got knocked over, whatever, that sort of type of thing, then you can take that out there and drop that off for free, which is some small way council can help out some of those people that have been impacted by the storms. Obviously, a lot of green material, a lot of debris came down during that time frame, but people still cleaning up a whole range of things damage to houses. We had a tree, a neighbour's tree come down on top of our roof, so we'll be a fair bit of time fixing up our roof on our house. So there's all sorts of things that happened across the community. But the great thing about it was, Matho, that we had no reports of any injuries, any major injuries at least, no reports of anyone being hurt. There's a lot of people out there on the road on in cars that suddenly the storm hit, so there could have been some major accidents, but thankfully no loss to life or limb. Yes, no, that's uh, very good news. Um, now, we've got uh, a big event happening in Dubbo. It's the Touch Footy uh, Carnival. Um, it looks like it's going to bring in about 10,000 people. Yeah, our latest reports are probably not quite 10,000. That was our initial estimations from New South Wales Touch. They've now got all the team registrations in. 187 teams have registered for that particular event. So they've scaled back a slightly the number. They think that that will bring about 7,000 people in. And obviously New South Wales Touch has got some pretty good data on previous events they've run, this same type of event they've run at different places around the state. But having said that, 7,000 people, three days of competition, many of those people will come a day or two early and maybe stay a day or two late. So a lot of people in Dubbo for a large chunk of time. We've put out a traffic plan around the Lady Cutler precinct there to show what will happen with traffic. There's some road closures just to try and keep that whole area free there. So just keep an eye out for that so that if you get up on one of those days and just think you're going to drive down through that area, even if the roads weren't closed, it would be complete congestion there. But we've closed those roads to make it a better event there. Uh, there's people, like motels obviously booked out completely, people staying in homes, people going to Narromine and Gilgandra and Wellington to stay in various locations there. So it'll be a really good thing for our community, really good chance to show off our community. And our estimations, our conservative estimations, show that that many people into the community for that length of time, probably $4 million minimum injected into our economy. So good for hospitality and cafe and obviously the motel. So good for a whole range of businesses in Dubbo and pretty exciting to get an event like that. That's the Northern Conference. So the New South Wales Touch Junior State Cup. So that's half the state the Northern Conference is playing here in that particular competition. If you get the chance, go down and have a look at it. There'll be some pretty high quality touch football being played. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Now, uh, for us uh, locals here, building sheds in your backyard, uh, the council's uh, putting in some rules there to um, to rein the shed sizes in. And we've got rules in place now, but they're normal development application rules. So if you're going to build a structure, it's got to conform to the current legislation. The problem is that you can have something fairly large with the current legislation. And we've just been getting a few more complaints coming in lately about a neighbour saying, because when a DA is put in, then the adjacent neighbours are notified. A neighbour sees this plan and says, wow, that's going to really overshadow my fence. I've got this beautiful house and and block here in Dubbo, and and then I'm going to have this big ugly shed next to me. So then you can talk to that neighbour or go through the process with council and try and just look at the size of that, maybe put some trees up as screening, but every case is being dealt with on an individual ad hoc basis. So what we're proposing is to amend our development control plan, and that amendment is to just keep some limit on those sizes 
And if the size, the larger the size gets, the further it's got to be back from your fence. So if you're going to make it very large at the moment, you can go very close to your fence, which can really overshadow your neighbour. So the larger you go, it's almost like a, a step back process. You, you're going to go that size, then you can be up close to the fence. You're going to go bigger, step back a bit, bit bigger again, step back a bit further, just to keep it in some sort of control. So that's actually out on public display now, That those draft amendments. So we'd invite the public to have a look at that. And that's the right time to have a look at those plans and those policies just to see how it's going to look for the overall community of Dubbo, not necessarily when it's right at the time that you've got this neighbour that might be building a big shed next to you. Once we've got that development control plan, once we get that final one through council, that means that someone wants to build a shed, there's our DCP, go and have a look at that and conform to that as well as all the normal building regulations. So just something to keep a bit of a, a handle on some of those big sheds that are being built. Yeah, uh, you get a lot of structures around and you want to uh, be a good neighbour. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, uh, Mayor Matthew Dickinson. It was very appreciated of your time. I know you're a busy man um, and you've got a big week, so uh, have a good one. And don't forget, just quickly, Matho, New Residence Night tonight. So 5.30pm till 7.30pm at the old Dubbo Jail. If you've moved to Dubbo in the last few months, come along. I might even shout your beer. Sounds like a plan. I'm, I'm a, can I register as a new resident? It's only been 13 years. Mm, not quite sure that qualifies. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Mayor Matthew Dickerson, thank you so much for joining us. We'll catch up next week. Thanks, Matthew. Meryl Memo with Matthew Dickerson from Dubbo Regional Council.